All right, we're back for part two of the Cleaver collab build. If you didn't see part one, I put together a pretty neat set of scales for this build with some bourbon barrel, elk antler, and true stone. So those are all finished up. Now in today's video, I'm going to get that knife, that cleaver heat treated, um, and we're gonna talk about the grind, and hopefully <clears throat> I can get that blade all finished up and ready for the scales. Let's get into it. All right, heat treat went good. I didn't do a ton of filming on it because I wanted to make sure I didn't catch my shop on fire. Um, you guys know I have kind of a bad uh, reputation with cleavers. If you watched uh, the cursed cleaver build. Anyways, so heat tree went good. Again, this is 80 CRV2. Um, and then I quenched it in Parks 50 oil. I believe I did it at 1450. And it turned out really, really good. Um, you can see I've got a little line there where it didn't get into the oil. So it's actually got a little softer spine, which might be cool. So we're going to figure out what we're going to do for the finish on this thing today. Um, my plan is to clean up the flats uh, somehow, not on the surface grinder, probably just on the regular grinder. Um, and you can see, I just want to clean it up a little bit before I decide on what finish I go with and figure out what we're doing with the bevels. Um, you can see here he's got his logo on it right there, which is really cool. And I kind of scored a line right below it where you can see I'm going to bring my bevel up too. I originally thought of bringing it up higher, mainly because whoever ends up with this um, will probably want to use it uh, more in the kitchen. And a cleaver is just super specific on what the grind and everything would work for. You know, obviously it's meant for chopping, um, so it's got a really steep bevel. Um, and I kind of wanted to bring it up uh, a little less steep so you could maybe even use this thing for some food prep, maybe do some veggies, stuff like that. Um, so my goal is to bring it up right below his logo. If I screw up, I'm going to bring it up higher and we'll figure out the logo later. Um, but that's the plan for today. I just finished up this week's orders and I thought, let me take the next day and make some progress on this. Let me take you over and see what I've been working on this week. So this is my drawer over here that kind of I put all my finished knives for the weekend. And there's just a little sneak peek. I think I finished up eight this week, which was a lot, but um, I've been so busy. I'm trying to make good progress every week and hopefully continue to put out some videos for you guys. I know I've been slacking but I'm trying my best. Okay, let's get into this. Now, before I get too far into the finish on this thing, I need to kind of experiment a little bit and see what I'm gonna do. I already know what I'm gonna do for the bevels. But for the flats on this, I'm not exactly sure. So I'm just taking a little bit of gun blue after I scotch brighted that with just a coarse red label abrasive scotch bright. And this gun blueing really darkens up high carbon steel really good. And I thought it could give it kind of a neat finish. And I'm just kind of trying to figure out how far I'm going to take those flats on the grinder to get the finish I want. Um, because I really want this thing to have a rustic, kind of aged look to it, I guess would be a good way to put it. So just with the little bit I'm seeing here, I don't need to take the flats of this crazy far. Let's see if you guys can kind of see what I'm doing before just doing some bluing. That bluing I use a lot, it uh, just gives a really cool look. Um, and this is just a little test to see what it's gonna look like. You can see it's just nice and dark and I didn't clean it or anything. So if you uh, wanna do this and keep it even, you need to 
clean the surface really good and apply it a little more specific than what I'm doing to get a good clean finish with it. So actually it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool look, I think. So I'm gonna tinker with that a little bit and then we're gonna get these bevels ground and see what happens. Oh, and before I get into grinding, you guys know, um, I use the KMG TX grinder. Um, I've had this for a few years. It's held up really good and they're actually running a sale on these right now, which they've never done. I've never seen them run a sale. Um, I'm not positive what the price is on them, but they're doing $650 off on the TX grinder. If you order it, I think in the next month or two, um, I've got a discount code down I'll put in the description. So if you guys are in the market for a new grinder, um, now is the time to pull the trigger. All right, let's grind these bevels. All right, I forgot we gotta get the layout die on here so I can mark my center line for these bevels. And I was gonna just show you guys how I do it really quick. I use this layout blue die which dries really quick. And then I use one of these granite surface plates with a height gauge. My tip's getting worn out on there, but it still works okay. Once that's dry, I set it on there. You guys can probably see what I'm doing. I take my height and I cut it in half. Tighten her down. And then you flip it and hit both sides, kind of. And then that gives you a really good center line to scribe to. And you can, let's see, I want to show you guys. So you can, yeah, basically there's a little tiny gap between those two lines that you know to grind to. So... There we go, we're ready to grind. All right, so I didn't show much of that grinding process because when I'm recording, my music doesn't go through here, so I always shut it off. And gotta have some tunes going while I'm grinding. Now, gosh, I took a ton of weight off of this thing. I wish I would have weighed it beforehand. Um, I ended up bringing the bevels up a lot higher than what I initially talked about, um, mainly because I messed up a little bit on the grind and took it up into his logo, and then there was no going back from that point. So like I talked about earlier, I think that with these taller bevels, it's actually going to perform a little better for uh, a more universal uh, task rather than just chopping. I left a little bit of meat on the edge so it can definitely handle some chopping, um, but I think it'll perform really good for uh, just regular kitchen, whatever you want to use it for. Now, what I did is I took this, I started with a 36 grit belt and hogged most of the material off and then worked my way up to a, I think I did a 180 to kind of clean it up. And now I'm going to start the hand sanding process. Um, I probably should have ground this with a jig. I think it would have helped a little bit, especially with these taller bevels. Um, it's a little uneven in a couple spots, like right, um, right here. You can see it's just a hair low. I don't know. You kind of can see it. Um, so what I'm going to do is figure out how much of a pain this is going to be to hand sand. Um, I think I have a pretty good idea. It's not going to go super well, um, but I'm going to hand sand this up and kind of even up these bevels a little bit and then decide what we're going to do for the finish for this thing. But uh, it's looking really good. Like I said, man, it feels so much lighter and uh, it's going to work good. So, all right, let's get to hand sanding. <clears throat> Okay, 
Okay, let me sh cut in and show you guys really quick what I'm doing. So I started at 120 grit, <clears throat> and I'm just kind of getting rid of those scratches going this way. And you can see I've got a couple right here. See these right here that I'm still working out. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. And this high carbon steel actually sands pretty fast compared to a lot of what I've been doing lately. Like the Magna Cut and the Dama Steel takes so much longer to hand sand. But um, I'm not gonna bore you with this process, but what I do for, and I don't know if I said this or not, but I'm gonna try to do a, a full mirror polish on the bevels on this. Um, so I'm gonna take it from 120 all the way up to 2000 and then do a three-stage buff on it. And then at that point, I'll probably check back in and show you guys what it looks like because a lot of times, once you buff it, you gotta go back and kind of fix, maybe go all the way back to 800, fix a few scratches to really get that mirror finish. And I think it's gonna make this uh, cleaver pretty cool. So I'm gonna do that and I'll check back in once I get there. Well, I've changed my mind like four times on <laughs> the blade finish of this thing. And I finally came up with something really cool. Um, so I'm not sure where I checked in last with you guys, um, but I started hand sanding this and I got the bevels nice and even. Um, and I was trying to figure out how to make kind of a bold transition between the flats of this and the bevels. And with that really tall bevel, it's hard to get it good and even. So what I did just in case you guys want to try this at some point, you can see I've got a really nice high satin finish on those bevels. And then I've got a nice dark blued finish on the flats. And if you look, getting that transition point clean is what's hard. So what I did, and it actually worked better than I expected, um, my whole goal was to get this even. And I think I showed earlier, I had some ups and downs in my bevel and uh, all I did was hand sanded that and smoothed out that, that very top transition. And I put some tape down once I had these bevels done. I taped a really good straight line on both sides that matched up. And then I took my bluing and, and blued right up to that line. So it kind of made it look like everything's absolutely perfect. Even though I had to adjust those bevels a little bit, I mean, they're really, really good, but that was kind of something I just tinkered with and it turned out really cool. So there you can kind of see, man, it's hard with the lighting in here, the finished product. I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. I could always take these bevels up a little higher in grit too. This is a, just a 400 satin um, smooth finish, but I think, that's going to be really cool and it will pick up a really cool patina over time as well. So maybe that'll give you guys something <clears throat> to try in the future. Um, kind of experimenting with tape and bluing and getting that really kind of aggressive contrast between two different uh, spots on a knife, which turned out actually cooler than I expected. So I'm not sure how long this video is yet. But like I said, in the first one, we're going to do a three-part series for this. So these are the scales that are going to be going on next week for next week's video. Um, I'm not sure how in-depth I'll get into that, but we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get there. Make sure you guys comment below. Let me know what you think of this so far. I think it's looking really cool. Um, kind of sad. I can't keep this one, guys. But uh, like always, thanks for watching. Um, I will put all the links for whatever I use in today's video below and a link to my Patreon if you guys want to support me that way. It's awesome. Like always, thanks for watching.